This story begins like many other games in this genre, in a dark and stormy night. This is, of course, only for dramatic effect. Adding to this drama, we see the main antagonist busy with evil deeds. This is used as comic relief, but also to establish character. All villains need a loyal and annoying servant that ultimately will betray his master in the end. This story is no exception and has chosen Sullivan for the task. My lord, the experiment has escaped. He pants. Two things. First, sound the alarm and activate all the traps. The immortal annoyedly replies. And if he somehow should make it out, I'm sure the dragon... I'm sorry. Wyvern wouldn't mind a snack. Second, you need some exercise. Sorry, but if I sugarcoat it, you'll eat that too, he continues. But what about the protagonist, our hero? The one with a fancy walk and a mighty weapon. Yeah, this is not him. This is just a random trash mob. Will he be used later on in the game? No. Say goodbye to him forever. Finally, we see our actual hero. But it's too peaceful. Something needs to break this tranquility. Every hero has a sidekick that, for no apparent reason, has a superpower that will aid the hero in solving critical puzzles. We picked Lucy for this mission. Will her backstory and how she ended up at this convenient location be explained? Probably not. Our hero picked her up and continued with his quest. Oh, would you look at that! This can be used to purchase heavy weapons, such as hammers from the Black Schmidt. Congratulations! You found your very first weapon. Press button to tear up your enemies and manage your equipped weapon in the inventory by pre By Yay Yay Abrams. Looks promising. Could definitely use some more lens. F hmm. All the pages are torn out. <laughs> oh, what is this? Apparently, it can be used to purchase. Norms are your main sources of protein. Press button to consume one. Huh? 
include IO stream int main. Uh, the rest is just an even more unreadable mess. By the immortal's beard, this shiny. At this point, something interesting needs to happen. How about some orcs having trouble connecting to their Wi-Fi, for example? No, not good enough. Take a look at this big pressure plate instead. Hmm, interesting. Yes! This outcome probably didn't come as a surprise to anyone. Except for Sullivan, who got very surprised to see the prisoner, our hero, escape on a killing spree in the dungeon. This perfectly wraps up the introduction, though. Let's continue. Childish is what boring people call funny people. What a rarity! It does not generate enough lift to be airborne, but reduces fall damage when equipped. What? These traps don't make any sense. Who even designs living areas like this? Oh well. <laughs> Crack open a cold one and whip some more ass during a limited amount of time. Hurry up and dis- Woohoo! You got yourself a magic stick filled to the brim. <coughs> now that we have reached the end of the tutorial level, the player is ready for the actual game. But here's also the mandatory deadly swinging trap section with a jumping puzzle, just as expected. <coughs> that will 
probably go unnoticed. Finally, we are done. This is also emphasized in the uplifting background music. In fact, we have decided we are completely done with our hero as well. It's time to let things go. Fine. Let's show what really happened. This mysteriously bobbing ghost lady is Melisande, leader of the Ceaseless Warriors Guild that now had become ceased. She asked who our hero was and where he came from. Melisande paid no attention to our hero's answer since she was too busy thinking about the big explosion that killed her. She asked our hero if he had something to do with it. Outraged by the answer, Melisande demanded our hero to resurrect her before it was too late. She explained that the ingredients could be found in and around the village, and the ritual could be performed in the basement of the Jolly Barrel Inn. Also, it's too dangerous to walk alone. Take my mace with you. I can't use it in this form anyways, she added before she vanished. Wow! You just acquired your first heavy-duty weapon! Smells a bit... Of... 
a delicious Our hero was not satisfied with the current song and asked the bard to play another one. Our hero realized he didn't have all the required resources to perform the ritual. Our hero browsed through the spell book and confidently picked the correct spell, as any protagonist would do.
As Melisande casually thanked our hero for reviving her, she couldn't fail to notice something felt a bit off. She apparently was not fully recovered and asked if our hero really had used the correct spell on her. Yes, of course. Our hero lied. This was a terrible situation. Now that Melisande's warriors were all dead and she was incapable to fight, she explained that orcs and other foul beasts were harassing the lands and they needed someone to keep them at bay before the immortal grew too powerful. Our hero had not yet heard about the main antagonist and asked Melisande to explain a bit more about him. A long time ago, the immortal came to this land. He introduced himself as a humble and kind wizard that spoiled the people with gifts and luxurious artifacts, which they naively accepted. He eventually became acquainted with the highest royalties in the capital city, earning him more trust and access to all of the land's resources, free of charge. Big mistake. One morning, the citizens were awoken by the immortal's enchanting voice with the city shaking uncontrollably. Not only did he split the capital city, but he also divided the land into three parts, making it impossible for the people to reach him. Fortunately for us, he is a villain of good conduct and forged the villain-beating artifact, the only weapon powerful enough to defeat him. The whereabouts of this weapon is, of course, unknown. Melisande realized she could not take on the quest to defeat the immortal in her current state, and asked our hero to take her place instead. She realized our hero maybe could be useful after all by talking to Richard Morningwood, the ticket master. He is located just outside town at his extraordinary carnival site, she added. Melisande will remain here at the inn and keep the local pub supporters hydrated until she has healed. The blacksmith asked, Need something to help your enemies see the error of their ways?
instantly consumed and has the effect of lowering all damage. Watch out! These explode upon... His ass handed to him. Our hero met Richard Morningwood, the ticket master, who explained that no one could buy tickets for the tourist attraction since his ticket machine was stolen. Richard Morningwood, the ticket master, asked if our hero could help him find it and in exchange get a discount on the ticket price. There are some suspicious tracks leading from here that might take you to the thieves. I'd start checking that out. Richard Morningwood, the ticket master, said. That's gonna be the mark. That poor guy's secret chili recipe dies with him.
Is what boring people call funny people. that out. Does this thing really
Richard Morningwood, the ticket master, thanked our hero for his heroic effort, but complained slightly about his smell. Richard Morningwood, the ticket master, asked if our hero would like to buy a ticket for the wild and extraordinary Guardian Tower tour. Our hero bought a ticket, and Richard Morningwood, the ticket master, wished him safe travels through the portal to the attraction. Our hero noticed he could not make a jump that large without an aid of some sort. Neither could he enter the not-so-secret portal to the sky, since a magic force field was protecting it. Our hero had no other choice than to return to Melisande and brief her about his recent findings. First line support is going to have a tough time with that. Our hero returned to Melisande and expressed his disappointment about the newly discovered force field. Melisande hesitated for a moment, but then continued. I really didn't want to go down this path, but I think our only choice is to speak to the goddess, she said. The goddess is our all-knowing creature that conveniently helps us whenever we're in trouble, Melisande said. But ever since the incident, she hasn't been very chatty. But it's our best option. You better head off. I sense a big surge for Grog incoming. She ended. Melisande asked our hero if he'd like anything from the bar. Melisande wished our hero good luck on his adventure. What is that smell? Apparently these...
Our hero reached the shrine and presented himself to Goddess Kling, the Joyful One. Who are you, stranger? Speak up, or I'll squeeze you into lemonade. No, no, no. You need to rhyme. What do you think this is? A game? Let's try that again. Who are you, stranger? Speak up, or I'll squeeze you into lemonade. No, no, no. Who are you, stranger? No, no, no. Who are you, stranger? What a ridiculous name! How dare you come and disturb me at this fine hour? No, no, no. Who are you, stranger? Speak up. What a ridiculous name. How dare you come and... Is that so? And what makes you think I'm willing to help a stranger like you? No, no. Who are you, stranger? What a... Is that so? No, no. Who are you, stranger? Speak. What a ridiculous name. Is that so? And what makes you think I'm willing to help a stranger like... No, no. Who are you? What a... Is that so? And what... Your flattery is disappointing, sir dumbass. Got any last words to say? What? Why didn't you say that in the first place? You're wasting my time. Look, I really want to help. But I'm afraid I can't since I'm stuck in this stupid pose. The local skeletons to the east has a fine selection of elbow grease that could help me loosening up. She explained. If you could retrieve some for me, I have something here that could come in handy on your quest. She said.
Our hero was caught up by the IRS, Immortal Revenue Service, and was prompted to pay his income tax. The IRS guy was not taking no for an answer, and decided to take our hero's body as payment instead. Get you into all royal and posh parties. I feel so sorry for that one's life.
That poor guy's secret chili recipe dies with him. Hmm. <laughs> 